Thank you for joining us today. I'm Kim Castleberry. I own and manage a multi-million dollar single location group practice with 7,000 square feet, 15 exam and treatment rooms with four doctors. But more significantly, we run the practice with 12 full-time equivalents, don't need an insurance department, and use technology to our best advantage. In fact, I often kid, all I ever wanted in practice was an unfair advantage, and that's what technology gives me. So I want to help you discover if Uprise can give your practice a technology advantage. We see over 200 patients a day in our clinic and optical, so we've learned a thing or two about EHR efficiency. You're welcome to visit my practice or email me to see for yourself what a technology integrated practice can do at its highest level. What you won't find in my practice are patient registration forms, filing cabinets, insurance claims to be filed, or charts to be completed. After five years of research and development and directing the design of our EHR, I'm excited to introduce a new paradigm in EHR, Uprise. I think we've taken an industry standard, elevated it to the cloud, raising the bar in efficiency, connectivity, and compliance. I can tell you that Uprise is designed by ECPs for ECPs. I can also tell you that going or changing EHRs is a daunting task and Uprise can make it easier. So today, I would like to help you decide if Uprise would be a good solution for your practice. The Uprise EHR design has many industry-first features, providing unique and proprietary functionality. Smart Touch is the heart and soul of the EHR, where a few selections chart a cascade of events reducing keystrokes dramatically. One or two severity-based ICD selections chart findings, orders, procedures with interpretation and reports already done, surgeries with operative notes already completed, the assessment with ICD and or SNOMED CT terminology, a plan with detailed treatments, and counseling with iMagination's video support selections available, and auto-coding with CodeSafe. CodeSafe automatically codes ICD CPT peers and assigns them to the correct insurance company automatically. And it validates coding with John Rimpakis' Reimbursement Plus for NCCI and LCD compliance with trademarked proprietary traffic light icons, red, yellow, and green. I can't wait to show it to you in just a few moments. CodeSafe traffic lights are found in orders, procedures and coding. It's like having a coding expert right beside you during the exam. MIPS Auto Report, a new standard in government's compliance, again reducing keystrokes for compliance, is going to be found in Uprise EHR. ePrescribing Plus, Uprise EHR features advanced functionality not usually found in eye care EHRs. The Uprise Metchid Center connects us to a world of inbound CCD patient referrals. And perhaps my favorite, the product catalogs. Prescribing and writing lab orders for products that exist is possible because the contact lens catalogs, spectacle catalogs, and frame catalogs are included in the platform that give us every configuration available for these things so that we're not prescribing or writing lab orders for products that don't exist. For instance, we can't prescribe a minus a quarter Active View Oasis because it doesn't exist. We can't write a lab order for a minus 475 cylinder Definity Progressive because it doesn't exist. All of this is built into Uprise with a beautiful user interface. So let's take a look at Uprise and start by looking at the EHR menus. The EHR menu options are Practice, Patient, Message Center, ePrescribing, and Configure, all along here at the top. Now the Practice icon is where MIPS Auto Reporting will bring a new standard in government compliance. It automates reporting with a dramatic reduction in keystrokes for MIPS reporting. No more clickety click click for compliance, just provide the care and Uprise will report. Now Uprise is coded with ICDs and SNOMED CTs for inbound and outbound communication compliance and connectivity. 
You've probably already seen the new reports called the CCD, the Continuity Care Documents. CCDs are the new communication standard and will soon supersede letter documents. And Uprise is connected. Because we're coded, we can be connected to mainstream medicine for bidirectional patient access. It turns out how you connect matters. No more one-way referrals with Uprise. If you want patient access to mainstream medicine, you have to be coded and connected, or as we say in Texas, locked and loaded. Uprise is locked and loaded for patient access. The message center is where it's at. It supports HIPAA compliant email for patients and providers, connecting ECPs to mainstream medicine referrals both inbound and outbound. And I can tell you, I haven't seen one single inbound referral with my legacy system. Uprise, on the other hand, as you can see here, has given me dozens, so how you connect matters. You can see here at the top, just on August 30th, I received two inbound referrals from physicians I have never met and for patients for which I've never seen. And let's go look at uh, an example. We'll bring up the CCD for this patient referral. Go down here and select the show CCD icon. And it's going to bring up the CCD. Now, this is the new communication standard. And you've probably already seen some, but it's important that we get used to these things learn how to use them so that we can connect in a coded HIPAA compliant way. You can see the patient name here at the top, contact information, demographic information, the physician's name, their contact information, and most importantly for our purposes here today, the reason for referral. It's being re referred in for an optometric exam for a diabetic. We can see uh, encounter details, allergies, medications, active problems, immunizations, social history, plan of treatment, prior visit diagnoses, and insurances that the patient has been on. And if we've seen the patient before, or if we've added them to our database, we can go in and assign this CCD and drop all that data into the EHR. So it's gone in and matched it up with patient Brenda Coat here. So we'll select Brenda because we've already added to our database. And then we go ahead and assign and open the reconciliation. Assigning and dumping all that information into the chart will simply add the problem list, the medication, and the allergies to the patient's chart. We can confirm all and it drops it in. ePrescribing Plus. Uprice has advanced functionality for electronic medications. It has features not found in most eye care EHRs. It has bi-directional alert support for allergies and medications, drug allergy, drug drug, drug disease, drug pediatric, drug geriatric, drug pregnancy, drug food, duplicate therapy, automated send to patient report, automated prior authorizations. It simply makes prescribing easier and safer. Again, how you connect matters. And it took me a long time to figure out that my legacy system had only basic level one-way support. This is the configure icon, and this is where the magic happens. This is where you can configure your exam types. Design your appointment types, appointment statuses, add or alter chief complaints where you can define your ocular medications, where you can add other tests that might be specific to your practice, and treatment code mapping. Treatment code mapping is the heart of smart code. So let's look at one. Let's go look at open angle with borderline findings low risk. So you can see here that we have all of the treatments, CPT codes and treatments in here arranged according to severity, mild, moderate, and severe. The system is going to come preloaded with configurations based on WebMD's Medscape exam protocols, but if you want to alter it to your particular workflow and your clinical decision support, you can add and subtract from treatment code mappings here. Templates is where you're going to find message templates and exam print templates. Message templates are quick messages that you can attach to 
CCD documents that you're sending out, for instance, for referrals. So let's look at one of them. I've got uh, all of them set up here, actually. Uh, for retinas consult, I've got uh, the type of uh, referral that I'm sending out and a little message. Hey, I'm referring for a retina consult. Now, on the other hand, if you want to not send a CCD out, you still can use an old-fashioned letter. You can automate the letter uh, that's are going out with exam print templates. So here I've got a diabetic exam report that I still use fairly frequently. I go in and edit it, and you can see here diabetic exam reports typically go to endocrinologists, primary care physicians, internal medicine doctors. And they typically want to see the assessment and procedures. The assessment telling you whether they have diabetic retinopathy, maculodemia, yes or no, and what you're going to be doing about it. So I simply select assessment and procedures to send those reports out. Now if we're sending for a cataract or something else, you'll see that again, I've selected groups that I want my cataract surgeons to see. They don't want a lot of data, but they do need more data than a diabetic report. So you can see you've got a complete range of built-in exam print templates that are editable, configurable, and changeable for your particular practice, right here in configuration of templates. Now patient care is where we're going to find things like counseling material. So you can go in and change the counseling material. So let's look at blepharoplasty. Uh, we've got the diagnosis that we want already set up in here for people to get this particular iImaginations text and or video sent to their patient portal, uh, and you can go ahead and change and alter the ICDs that you want going with this particular report. Or if you don't like the content there, you can actually send a different hyperlink. You can go to the internet, find out whatever information you want them to see, and add the hyperlink right there. So again, a prize patient care counseling material comes pre-configured with iImagination's uh, videos, but you can certainly add any other content that you want through these hyperlinks right here. Before we leave the EHR menus, I want to make a couple of observations. You can look up here to see the message center has uh, two red balloons. The balloons are indicating that we have a couple of items that we haven't dealt with. In this case, this message center balloon shows me that we've got two icons or two patients that are being referred in to me that haven't dealt with yet. So I'm going to have to get my staff on that. When we go over to e-prescribing, we can also see with e-prescribing, we have something that hasn't been dealt with yet. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And in this case, it looks like it's a prior authorization. So this prior authorization has already been dealt with in an automated way. And it's got a favorable outcome. So uh, we can go ahead and send off a note to the patient through their patient portal or drop them a phone call to let them know that their restasis prescription has been approved. Again, I love the fact that in Uprise, we have these balloons up here to let us know that these things are happening. In my legacy center, I had to remember to go into e-prescribing to see if I had anything to deal with. Same thing with message center. So again, how you display, how you connect these things, once again, matters. The patient slider bar that you see over here to the right, you can slide in or slide out. Sliding out, you can see a list of your current patients for this particular doctor. So this is my schedule here. And I've got Courtney Johnson coming in. Her appointment was at 12 uh, 35. She's been in consultation in the exam room in 739 minutes. I guess we need to go in and find her. It tells me that she's in for a comprehensive and contact lens exam type. It says she's 33, a female, and there's her date of birth. And she tells me that she's in exam room 10. So she's been there all night long, so I guess I better get over there and take care of her. We can see here that uh, Tiny Tim is in, a, in exam 7 for a glaucoma evaluation. We can see here that Scott Morse is uh, ready for a patient request. Uh, that means that uh, we've already dealt with a request, and it's sitting here waiting for the staff to call him back. Uh, this pretty little lady right here is out on optical. And this little gentleman is imaging one. And here Santa Claus has a refill RX request pending. So we can bring Santa Claus up, deal with that, take care of the refill RX request, and then we can put uh, go down here and put uh, th that it's ready for the patient. That's an indication for the next staff member to go ahead and call Santa Claus and tell him that his uh, Viagra prescription is ready at the pharmacy. 
So again, this is uh, just a really great tool to track patients, how long they've been in the exam room, location tracking, showing your patients where they're at, and it also lets you uh, deal with things like patient request for Rx refills or other request. And then if you go here to the bottom, we can see uh, that we've got unsigned exams down here. So nothing gets left undone. One final observation about the patient slider bar. You can check the patient in in the EHR by using a, a slider bar, or you can go over into the practice management side and check them in at patients. But let's go ahead and check me. I'm, I'm set here for uh, I'm an upcoming patient waiting for an exam at 1.40 p.m. for a comprehensive and a contact lens exam. I'm scheduled, but I just walked in, so let's go ahead and check them in. This patient has arrived now. So you'll see here in just a few moments, and in fact, there it is, uh, I'm already arrived. And so I go to the front desk. The front desk is going to go ahead and log him in as being at the front desk. And then uh, the patient's going to get to have a... Uh, uh, a bottle of water, go over, have a seat, and wait for the tech to pick them up because there's no office uh, forms to fill out in our office. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, send them to the reception room. So the patient's sitting in a reception, the technician comes out, picks them up, and then they're going to go into the pre-testing area. So you can see how it's tracking the patient flow through the whole office. Again, the technician is going to take it into exam, so let's put them in exam A, and the patient's ready uh, to be seen by the doctor. So we can go ahead and click on the patient, bring it up, and this takes us into the patient menu. And let's look at the patient menu highlights. It's got a, a beautiful interface where everything is pretty much one selection away. So we can see a summary of everything that's going on with the patient right here. And I love the fact that I can look at any orders and my staff can look at any orders that are ordered from prior exams right here in the patient summary tab. We can also cursor through their refractions. We can look at their active problem list. We can look at their vitals. They would include IOPs, blood pressures, visual acuities, and the like. We can look at their medication list. We can look at their allergy list, all right here in, in, in one a tab. This is also one of the several areas where we could send out communications to other providers or to the patient. The clinical summary, which creates the CCDs that we've been talking about, can be done easily right here. So we'd simply put whatever information we need here, that it's normal, uh, description, and we're doing a summarization of encounter, designate whether it's going to a patient or a professional. Let's go ahead and send this one to the patient, and we're going to send it uh, about this particular exam, and we're going to import all the data. Now here we're going to have one last moment to take a look down through here to see if there's anything that we don't want to send to the patient. Maybe we don't want to send them a message that my BMI is 35.3. I think that's really a good idea. Let's get rid of that. Now we can go ahead and preview the CCD. And here we have the new letter. This, the CCD, as we mentioned earlier, is the new letter. So this is the way that we all need to learn how to communicate and connect with other providers. So you can see here that we've got adverse uh, medication allergies and reactions, the history of medications, my problem list, procedures that are done, everything that would need to be known about me on this exam encounter can be found right here. And yeah, you can also take a look at this print icon and print it out. Or in this case, we're going to click done and send it to the patient portal and it's already in the patient portal. The patient menu includes many tabs along here along the top. You can see we've got immunizations, documents, we've got the problems and procedures. I frequently use this one either before I go in and see a patient or actually many times while I'm in an exam. It's only one selection away to see what kind of problems they've had in the past or if I want to see when the last time I did a visual field was, I can see that it was right here because it's sortable and selectable by date. Uh, we can see when the last time they complained about something is. So you've got real quick, quick uh, one selection access to many and much uh, of the documentation that the patient has with respect to their patient records. One of my favorites is the imaging tab. Imaging is embedded into Uprise EHR. So here is where you can go see any of the images that they might have from radiology findings to electrodiagnostics to fundus. OCT findings, 
visual fields, and you'll see the evidence documents are right here for viewing. Again, one of the unique things about Uprise is that imaging is actually embedded into the EHR. So let's go ahead and get into the exam. This is the exam user interface. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's got sorted here the, all the different kinds of office visits that the patient has been in for uh, by group here along this side. But let's look at all of them. So we can see that the patient is sitting uh, in the exam room with uh, lids drooping. At least this was back on September 8th. And we can see that it's still in drafts, so it hasn't been signed. But you can go down here and see all the exams that the patient has been in for, the reason for visits, the dates, and the status. Also, we can go down here to the bottom. This is where the care team goes. So if you want to have the patient's uh, referring ophthalmologist or the family doctor or the diabetic doctor, that's where all this information would go. So let's start by looking at, uh, at a completed exam. Let's let you take a look at the user interface for an eye exam. It really is a beautiful thing. It's a single page scrollable exam form with SOAP formatted groups. So we have all the subjective groups here at the top with what and when the patient is coming in for, the chief complaint, the past family social history, and the review of system could be here, the lifestyle, allergies, medications, and then the objective groups start with the vitals with visual acuities, IOPs, cup to disc ratios, pupil and general constitutional kinds of things. We've got the screening procedures and other tests set right here. And you can see again the embedded image management system in here. So if you want to take a look at the patient's Optimap and you've stored the evidence document there, you simply go ahead and bring it up and look at it right here. Or you can obviously go down to your taskbar at the bottom, bring it up in the patient review software if you want to look at that image in the patient review software. But many things like corneal topography, for instance, they really don't need to be in the native review software. There's no reason you can't go ahead and look at it uh, right here. Just have your staff put it in the Uprise image management tabs. We can see other tests, keratometry, refractions. We've got a beautiful refraction group. Can't wait to show you that in just a few minutes. Binocular vision, we cover that in a comprehensive way. And the physical exam. And what is unique about Uprise is we only display in the user interface abnormal or clinically significant findings. Now, as you'll see here, all other remaining conditions have been reviewed as normal, has been selected, and we track and we document all of the normal findings, but we don't display and trash up the user interface with things that we don't really need to see for clinical decision-making support. And here we've got our assessment and treatment plans, so we'll bring one up. Here is the treatments that have been documented with this particular diagnosis. And here's all the procedures that we've done. If we want to bring up an interpretation report, here it is. We can see the evidence documents down here in the interpretation and report. And as you'll find, and we'll be able to see in just a few moments, they are automatically completed based on the severity and the condition that's coming in for. Here's the patient counseling group. This is where we can select things to go to the patient portal that will allow them to look at uh, an iMaginations video. We can make any general notes down in this area. And here's the coding area. And this is where CodeSafe really shows through beautifully. It'll take the CPT code, pair it with the ICD code, and it'll automatically sign it to the insurance company. And then all we have to do is sign it, and it pushes it, pushes the data to the invoice and or pushes all of the communications to the patient portal. So now let's go ahead and load a new exam. We know that, uh, that I'm coming in for a comprehensive established and contact lens exam, so my staff is going to go over here and find this right at the top select it, and it'll go ahead and start a new exam. And the technician can go ahead and check themselves in, or you can add it here. And uh, this is where they can start adding chief complaints. Now, if you have a history, if you look at this history icon, and an important feature of any EHR is that you'd be able to look at the history of anything they've been in for, and then be able to change and update the status. So we can simply 
bring in all of the past chief complaints or take a look at them in a history and select them and bring them in or we can add new ones with this plus icon. Let's take a look at the history. So we've got a dry eye evaluation and let's say that it's improved uh, and that it's mild now. And we've got floaters that have resolved. So we select all of these things and it puts them down here in that manner. So again, the history icon you'll find throughout the program, whether it's physical exam findings, assessment, or the chief complaint, it makes it very usable to copy forward and update prior exam findings. The past family social history. It's really terrific because if you have the patient portal turned on for this patient and they go to the uh, their patient portal to register, they can go ahead and pre-populate these forms. But more typically, the patients present without having done that. So rather than give them paperwork to fill out, where we then look at the paperwork and we hand type this in, we simply have the patient take a seat out in the welcome area, give them a bottle of water or a cup of coffee, tell them we'll be right in, and my staff comes in and sets down and real quickly interviews them and, and fills out this form for them. But again, if they've been in in a prior exam or if they've been on the patient portal, you can simply pre-populate the form here. And same thing with ocular, and here it is, it's all right here. And of course you can update it as necessary and review it. And once you close it, you can see here that the complaints have been reviewed and are still active. And then in the PFSH, it's been re last reviewed by Kim Castleberry in the role of the optometrist. Now sometimes you're in an exam and, and you want to really see something about uh, the past that's not really here. For instance, uh, when was their last visual field? Or we're seeing a patient with herpes and I want to know if they have have herpes before. Well, instead of flipping through, you know, 30 or 40 pieces of paper in a paper chart, I simply go into the problems and procedure tab and I can look at any history of problems and find out if they have herpes before or I can simply go down to procedures and find out if I've done a visual field and when the last time it was. And then I can pop back into my exam and then continue on. So let's look at the lifestyle. We've built in a lifestyle questionnaire so that you can again pre-populate it if they've already been on and done it or in an interview process my staff may get that in the prelim or pre-testing area. And again it can be updated as necessary but this allows us to uh, prescribe and provide the kind of products that may be necessary to take care of their optical needs. Now allergies and medications. Again, because Uprise is connected in a bi-directional way, we can go out and find out what any other doctors have reported in terms of allergies and just simply hit that icon. It makes it really quick to enter any allergy medicine history. Then we can ask the patient if that is updated and if it's complete. Same thing with medications. You can simply go out there and get all of the medications and you'll find that most patients have a database of medications. Now with my legacy system, uh, I kept wondering why nothing was there. It's because they only had a one directional way. I could send things upstream, but I couldn't get anything downstream. Now with vitals, Vitals is a unique new category for optometrists and it really just kind of parallels and lets us dovetail and connect to mainstream medicine in a meaningful way. So we've uh, got visual acuities here in vitals, we've got pressures, and what you'll see here is the last findings for these kinds of tests are watermarked. And so you can go in and update them if it's changed with really one selection, clicks, very easy. We need to add our pressures. You can look at your pressure history by hitting the history icon, or you can see that the latest measurements are right here. And if we want to add any new measurements, again, add them right here. And we have a whole sundry of ways to do that. In cup to disc ratio, pupil sizes, general and constitutional. And again, if you have any connected devices like OCTs for cup to disc ratios or NCTs that are connected, you can simply hit get device data. It'll go out there, find all of those things and populate vitals for you. Or you can simply go in here and import previous data and it'll take all the previous data and populate it in here. And then you can uh, salt and pepper to taste after that.
The other test group is where we add tests that may be unique to your practice or simply tests that are non-coded and you want them separately identifiable in their own space. So here, tear testing, we may add it here and we may note that they have a 0.5 millimeter tear prism. And with vital dye staining, we may note that they have a 2 plus SPK uh, with fluorescein. And with keratometry, if you, again, if you've got pre, if you've got uh, connected equipment, you would hit get device data. Uh, in, our, in this case, we'll simply import the previous data, or you can use the slider bar to have this data in it very, e in it very easily as well. Now, refraction. As good as our medical part is in, e in Uprise EHR, refraction is is equally good. And what we do with the refraction is we take the last final prescriptions, no matter what exam they're in, we take the last final spectacle and contact lens prescriptions and put them into today's presenting prescriptions. And so, if, again, if you've got connected equipment, you would hit get device data, bring that connected equipment in, and it'll automatically populate your findings here. Let's go ahead and show you how you would enter an auto refraction manually would simply at plus two, minus 50, axis 80, with a 250 add, uh, same thing here. Again, just using the slider bar, enter these things in and hit done. And so typically I'm gonna come into a scenario like this where the presenting for both the glasses and contacts here with the auto refraction, and I may copy that to manifest, and I may put the cuties in here, and then I may go ahead and just copy that to final. Assign a usage. Let's say we want to put them in a general purpose progressive. And we want to copy to alternate. And we want to put this patient in an occupational progressive as well. Again, let's add a PD. So that's automatically in the lab order. We have a really terrific contact lens module. So let's take the last presenting, or let's take the presenting uh, contact lens here for the dailies total bring that up and you can simply enter the new powers in here and what I love is the Uprise database is are connected to the vision web catalogs of every contact lens that's made so it doesn't allow me to pick anything that isn't made so let's go ahead and just over refract this let's say our over refraction is a uh, plus a quarter on the right eye and on the left eye it's a minus a quarter and we can make an observation that everything is centered and moves normal and aligns properly. We can make any notes about the wearing schedules right down here. If we want to make hand type any notes, we certainly can do that down in here. And we can copy this to the uh, final prescription. And we can put our quantities in here. And as you can see, it's automatically updated the sphere powers based on the over refractions and we click done. Now, as good as the soft contact lens inventory is, but what you're gonna find I think is also unique about Uprise, we have every field available for every lens type. How do I know that? It's because I consulted some contact lens experts all across the United States to make sure that we have every single field that you might need. So for instance, if we go look at a real complex one, a rigid multifocal bitorque, so you can see here we have all the fields that would be necessary for this particular lens type. And I'll tell you, after having designed gas permeable software for 20 years, this is unique. Again, I don't think you're going to find that there's any fields missing in here, and I think you're going to find it very easy to use, and probably the most full-featured custom contact lens module in the EHR world for optometry and ophthalmology. When you're finished with refraction, you have a couple of options for printout. You can click on the select all icon and all the prescriptions will print out or you can print each individual prescription as you desire. Now let's look at the binocular vision group. We have a very comprehensive group of binocular vision tests and these are the ones that I've got set up for default in my particular exam. If I wanted to add additional tests I'd hit the plus icon but let's process the ones I've already got selected. So the fused cross cylinder, I've got a plus 250. The cover test, I'm ortho. The cover test at near, let's say I'm 8XO. 
My near point of convergence is 10 centimeters. Near point of accommodation is 7. And my right eye is dominant. So you can see with just a handful of clicks, we were able to quickly and efficiently document a really comprehensive group of binocular vision tests. Now the physical exam is where Uprise really starts to shine. We have a couple of ways that we can enter problems. One is through the favorites selection, and it's kind of like having a super bill with all the favorites that you've got selected that are starred that you use in your practice on a day in, day out basis. It's kind of like having a super bill. Or we can go use the category selection, which is what I prefer. It's got a more traditional view of the external findings, anterior segment, posterior segment, systemic, and other conditions. And let's say, for example, that we have a mild dry eye, a mild cataract, and we have a moderate glaucoma high risk suspect. Let's document that. So let's select dry eye, glaucoma, lens, and let's say we want to draw it out for them so we can show them what it looks like. Everything else is normal. All the normal findings turn green, all the abnormal findings are red, and we process this. So we take a cortical cataract in the right eye, a cortical cataract in the left eye that are both mild, and let's say we want to pick up an annotation and make a little drawing about the cortical cataracts for the patient. We can pick up a pencil and do that, go on to the next one. And let's say, again, we have a mild dry eye, and we have a moderate high-risk glaucoma suspect. And let's process that. <clears throat> and look at what happens. We've got all of the physical exam findings in SNOMED coded terminology right here in physical exam. We have our annotation drawing there for review, and we have all of our assessments and associated treatments. So let's select cataracts as our primary, and you can see here we've got cortical cataracts with all the individual treatment plans for a mild cataract, and we've got all the treatment plans for mild dry eye, and all the treatment plans for moderate glaucoma high risk suspect. It's also given us a selection of orders that we can perform today, or we can schedule in the future. Let's say that we want to do a visual field and an OCT today, and an OCT of the anterior segment, we want to schedule that for a month. And we also want to do a pachymetry in a month. Now we can go to patient counseling where we've got a whole selection of items that are going to be sent to the patient portal so that they can review what's going on. And the ones that we don't want to send Send, we can simply deselect. And then when you come down here to coding, you can see that everything is already paired up. The refraction is put with the correct ICD. The contact lens exam is associated with the correct ICD. And because we're in monovision, I want to change this to a level two, which is a higher fee, more complicated level of contact lens exam. And then we can see here that our visual field has been paired with glaucoma suspect and checked against John Rampakis' reimbursement plus with code safe. It says it's going to get paid. Same thing with 92133. We got a couple of problems here with our traffic light system. Let's click on 92015 and it's a non curved service and of course it's not going to get paid. That's exactly why we're billing it to the patient. So we simply sign the exam and we're done. And we can compose the clinical care document import everything, and send it to the patient portal. Now let's go over to optical checkout and see what it looks like over here. So the patient's gone to optical or they're going to checkout. You can go ahead and pull up your invoice here and you can see that everything has come over from the EHR. We've got all of our CPT codes paired with the correct ICD code and being billed to the correct entity, the insurance or the patient. All we have to do is simply pay and post it and the claim is finished. Thank you for joining our webinar. I hope it was useful in helping you to decide which EHR is best for your practice. Again, I hope you feel free to contact me anytime because I'm happy to help out.